Today, we prepared a review of a game the popularity of which caused a new franchise to be born. The foundation of the plot is a real military operation under the code name Just Cause, which took place in 1989. This exact operation became the core of the plot for the new game from Avalanche Studios, in which the player is tasked with liberating different countries from their cruel dictators. The project combines such genres as open world action, sandbox, third person shooter, action adventure. The closest by nature game is GTA, but the scale is vastly different. You could say that these games borrowed the insanity from Saints Row, but they came out almost at the same time. Not to mention that the first Saints Row was pretty serious. Now, how did Just Cause manage to impress the players enough to stay afloat to this day? Well, let's just say there's a lot. In this video, we'll remember everything, starting with the first game and ending with the fourth, and after that, we'll talk about the fifth. Let's start. Just Cause 2006 After the studio first announced Just Cause, many thought that it's gonna be just another third-person shooter set in an open world. And yet, Avalanche Studios didn't even think of competing with Rockstar Games by trying to make a city filled with life. From the very start, the studio offered the player what they never truly got from other sandbox games, creation of absolute chaos. Veteran players, tell us in the comments what you liked the most about the first game. The story tells us about how the main character, Rico, goes on yet another mission to a fictional tropical country, San Espirito, the locals of which are suffering from the actions of the antagonist. The people created an opposition, but they still need help, which you will provide. Together with other agents, you will begin your revolution. The world area was 1,025 square kilometers. In 2006, Just Cause was the record holder in this regard. The first game laid the foundation of the main elements of the series one of which was the free and quick movement throughout the map using all kinds of methods. For this, Rico has a parachute, and most importantly, his trusty hook, which he can use on practically anything. This very tool is the hero of the experiments, with acrobatics and destruction. By the way, if the player overdid the latter, the local police started going after them just like in GTA. Of course, we can go around the sunny San Espirito by traditional means too, specifically through using all kinds of vehicles, such as cars, motorcycles, airplanes, etc. At any given moment, the player can jump out of the car and jump right into the next one. Among the downsides, there were two things. Despite the size of the world, it wasn't filled with varied events, which is why the playthrough became routine after you tried everything the game had to offer. The plot doesn't explore the backstory of the character, and in general, there is no allusion to anything grandiose. This didn't prevent the game from setting the bar for the genre and displaying brave gameplay mechanics. The game received a total of 7 out of 10, and the release of the sequel was just a question of time. Just Cause 2 while developing the sequel, the Avalanche Studios were striving to improve on what they made in the first game, their argument being that they missed out on a lot of potential. The game came out on PC, Xbox 360, PS3, and became one of the best in the series. Rico is once again tasked with overthrowing a dictator, this time on the Panu Archipelago, the previous ruler of which, Panay, died and the reins of his rulership went to his son, Baby Panay, who turns out to be a tyrant and a murderer. Building many military bases on the islands, he has no clue that Rico Rodriguez is coming after him. The developers moved the emphasis from the size of the world to its fullness. Its size is 1,000 square kilometers, but the player is given a variety of different locations for exploration – beaches, plains, mountains and forests, and many settlements. The territory is divided between three groups that you can take missions from. The gameplay stayed the game in many ways. We go around, explore surroundings, complete missions, purge the settlements of bandits. There's more weapons, as well as vehicles which you can buy on the local black market. The hook is still there, and even better, the gadget was significantly improved. Now Rico can pull two objects together, for example, tie two enemies together, and hook not only cars, but also buildings and other surfaces. The game is created on the Avalanche Engine 2.0, and this allowed the developers to raise the bar for quality. Vehicle behavior became more realistic, physics got fixed, and most importantly, destruction was added. Enemy buildings, president statues, gas reservoirs, water towers, marked with red color, could be destroyed to the ground for which you get chaos points to progress through the plot. A fan-made multiplayer mode was made called Just Cause 2 Multiplayer Mod. At first it allowed up to 8 players, but later the bar was raised to 1,000. 
There were no missions or NPCs in the multiplayer. The players made up their own fun, like hunting for each other, racing, etc. There were two issues, the enemy AI and the plot. The enemies ended up being, well, really dumb. And even though the story is filled with interesting events, it once again ended up being pointless and not leading to anything global. Just Cause 3 During the development of Just Cause 3, Avalanche Studios decided to point their attention to the mods created by the community. As a result, the company even hired the designer of one of the most successful multiplayer mods. However, the game didn't get a co-op mode anyway. To deal with the issue of fiddly vehicle controls, the studio hired the creators of the racing series Burnout. Leave a like if you played it. This time around, the studio decided to give more attention to Rico himself and develop him as a character. Regardless of the still present humor, the developers added some drama to the plot, telling us about Rico's past. Concerning the gameplay, the developers took the same route as before. Rico's arsenal was expanded by a special wingsuit costume, which significantly increased the speed with which you can go through the area filled with over a hundred of structures for capture and exploration. The hook now allows us to catch up onto six objects at the same time. Also, Rico's backpack now has an infinite amount of C4 charges, and after a certain upgrade, you can place up to three of them at the same time. Just imagine the mayhem you could create. Just Cause 3 was criticized for its visual component, which didn't improve much compared to the second game and couldn't compete with other titles released in 2015. Other than that, the game wasn't the most optimized title of Avalanche games, making the players disappointed with long loading times after every death. Just Cause 4 At the center of the plot of the fourth game, as always, is Rico. However, this time, he's tasked with fighting an entire group of greatly equipped soldiers called the Black Hand. The first time we hear about the group is way back in the first game. You are sent to the Solus Archipelago, and your task is fighting these criminals. This is the first game to develop the past of our main character. His father once worked for the Black Hand, and Rico decides to find out the truth about it. An updated version of Apex Engine is used for Just Cause 4. Other than improving obvious technical aspects, graphics, animations, AI, surrounding the detailization, it also allowed the developers to realize different extreme weather effects, which also affected the gameplay. Storms, tornadoes, blizzards, and lightning could assist the player in dispatching of the enemies, or conversely, hinder you. The core of the gameplay is this same old insane arcade sandbox. Even more vehicles, jet fighters, racing cars, construction machinery, etc., a variety of weapons, the wingsuit, the configurable hook, the player is once again called to have fun and destroy everything around in all kinds of ways, and to liberate the settlements from criminals, of course. It's hard to say more about this game. The developers use the same formula, not daring to do any global experiments. But if in the old games it worked, here everything is not as smooth. The game got an average of 6 to 7 out of 10 both from the players and from the publishers. Just Cause 5 Now, regarding the fifth game, there are rumors that it will have a more interesting plot, but regarding the release date, there's not much known yet. The players assume that the development will take longer than usual. The developers plan on improving stealth, adding even more twists. Some insiders are talking about a brand new main character. The gameplay couldn't change too much, but the graphics will definitely improve. The effects will become even more realistic. Military vehicle controls will be more realistic, which will undoubtedly add a massive enjoyment to playing the game. There are also rumors saying that the developers are planning on adding a co-op mode, for which they will significantly widen the storyline which would allow the players to play through the game together. And that's all. Leave a like and tell us which game in the series is your favorite. See you soon!